Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel for another video. And today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how you can delete oil injection off one of your Beta two stroke dirt bikes. So if you guys have been watching the channel, you would see that I've picked up one of these Beta Cross Trainer 300 two strokes, and it does come with oil injection from factory, but we've already since gone over and deleted that off the bike. Now, if you guys have spent any amount of time hanging out in like any of the Facebook page groups, you'd see that a lot of people are deleting the oil injection on these bikes. And that doesn't seem all that common on like the Huskies or the KTMs or the gas gases where people are deleting the oil injection, but on these Beta is they're kind of known for oil injection failures. So today I'm gonna to show you guys on how to delete it. Now it's a bit of a touchy subject with some guys when they're talking about the oil injection on the systems on these bikes and they just say, ah, oh, just run it. It's been fine. I've had a bike. It's lasted a couple hundred hours. No problems with the oil injection, but there is just a risk for catastrophic engine failure by running the oil injection system. And this is why we delete it. It's a system that if it has an issue, uh, you're gonna kill your motor. It's as simple as that. So by eliminating that system, you guarantee that you're not gonna have any oiling issues. So touchy subject or not, we deleted oil injection off my bike. I have no regrets on it so far. The bike runs absolutely perfect, beautifully smooth, and I don't have to worry about the oil injection ever kicking the bucket and leaving me with a dead bike. Now there's about three stages, if you want to call it that, of deleting the oil injection. Now with my bike, I've simply done stage one, quote unquote, if you will, of the oil injection delete. And then I'm going to show you on what is stage two and what is stage three of oil deletions. Now I've just made up these stages, but there's a couple different ways you can delete it. And depending on how far you want to go along removing the system, or if you want to keep it there so you could use it in emergencies like I've set up. So for the very simplest form of oil injection delete is we're going to come down to the nipple as you can see here is our oil injection line. Now you can see I've just folded it over on itself and we've got a zip tie on it. So that's all you gotta do there is just pinch off the line to stop any sort of delivery of oil and making sure that there's not uh, any vacuum leaks or anything where air gets sucked into the air intake boot. That will ruin your fuel mixture uh, from your carburetor, which is gonna make your bike run like crap. So that's plugged off. So now we won't have any oil flowing into the intake boot. Now you can get uh, ones that have a delete kit that have this completely removed. But this is what I like to keep it. So in emergencies, I could cut the zip tie and uh, it's still available to use. Now there's one other thing that you need to do to make sure that this isn't uh, trying to pump. Uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and let's just pull off this air box like this. All right, and just like that, ignore the air filter. Let's get that thing out of the way so we can see what we're looking at, just like this. All right, and now we got clear access to our oil injection pump back in here. And all we gotta do is come grab our blue little connector that would plug into the oil injection and we're just gonna unplug it and that's it. That is the first simplest stage to oil deletion and just like that, you've deleted your oil injection and uh, you don't have to worry about it. Now you can just go ahead and start pre-mixing your gas. There is one thing to note about this though is that when you unplug it, this bike does have a check engine light that's gonna be up on your dash. Now on this bike with the check engine light, it's only responsible for your TPS system here on the back of the carburetor and for your oil injection pump. So if one of the two of those systems fails uh, or it's not detecting that it's working correctly, it's gonna throw a check engine light. So you are gonna have a check engine light consistently on your dash with just doing those two simple steps. Now we will show you on how to remove that check engine light, but just note, this is how I ran my bike in this state for the last uh, about 30 hours on the bike and it's been flawless. But the only thing that does suck is if you do leave it with the check engine light, uh, you won't be able to use your like, you, you won't be able to see any of your statistics or stats. So you you won't be able to see your odometer or the um, any information that's in this bottom right corner of the screen as it's just gonna have say check and then you have your check engine light illuminated. So as I mentioned prior, this is how I've left my bike and I've been riding it for a while. And there's a reason I've left it in this stage one, if you will, of oil deletion. And that is because it's easily reversible for whatever reason that I wanna start using oil injection again. All I have to do is come down, cut that one little zip tie off the top of the intake there, plug oil injection back in, and my oil injection system should work. If for whatever reason I was stuck somewhere completely out of gas and I needed to take gas and siphon it out of another bike or whatever reason, right? I could just plug the oil injection back in and have have that to try and get me out of whatever situation I'm stuck in. And then the final reason is if you went to do some sort of vehicle inspection or something, we have to take your bike in for a safety inspection and you can't have any codes or anything up on the display and everything has to work as OEM. I could simply plug it back in, check engine light goes away and uh, everything functions as it should OEM. But we're finally gonna take our bike over to stage two and we're gonna get rid of that check engine light so we can use our functions up on our dash. So first things first, if we wanna be able to remove that check engine light, we need to start by removing this headlight piece so we can get Get access to the plugs that are in behind it that go up into the dash display. So to remove our headlights, really simple. We just got two pull straps, one on each side of the fork, pull those guys and your headlight can come forward. 
Now, once we've pulled the headlight off, we're looking for this bundle of wires here that comes off this main harness here on the back of the unit. We're gonna follow it down. We're gonna look for the four pin connector, which simply means that it's the one that has four wires going to it, which is this plug right here. You have another one that's got three and one that's got two. So we're looking for the four pin connector and we're gonna go ahead and let's unplug this guy here. So here we got the female connector. We're gonna see this very far left pin right here has the pink and purple on it. And this is the wire that we are gonna just deep in here for our check engine light. All right, well, it's been an hour since the last clip. I am struggling. There's this purple wire or pink wire with this purple stripe right here and you need to deep pin it from this and that'll get rid of your check engine light. I just don't have the right tool and I've been trying to use pins and uh, it's just not happening. But either way, if you deep pin this pink and purple wire or even cut it, I just don't wanna cut it. I wanna be able to repin it in, but that is how you're gonna get rid of your check engine light. So I found this video here from our buddy, uh, his name's Jared over at the Three C's YouTube channel. And here he's got the proper pin that uh, you actually, this is the little tool that you're gonna need that's gonna make it way easier. And uh, you need to try and push the pin into the right side, the top of the like mushroom, if you will, on the pin and try and slide it down to be able to pull the pin out but uh, we need to get that proper tool for us to be able to do it. If you wanted to, you could cut the wire and that would also do the same trick as depinning it, but I can't figure, I just can't deal with it right now. But either way, let's just jump into what is stage three and stage three is gonna be removing the entire system. So to be able to remove the entire oil injection tank that's hanging in there, you got a couple bolts that are hanging in there. You need to remove the rear mud fender. Uh, and this entire plastic that wraps around the side, and you'll get access to the rest of the tank and you can remove it from there. And then if you're gonna remove the line that's in here that we've got zip tied up, uh, once you pull that line off, you can either get the replacement intake boot or you can go ahead you're gonna take some of these vacuum caps, find the right size vacuum cap, and that's what you're gonna stick down on that oil injection port right there. You're gonna put a zip tie on it and cap it off right there and uh, your oil injection system will be completely removed and you'll have a bunch of space here in the air box to be able to put your tools or some other goodies hidden up in there. But that is gonna be how you delete your oil injection system. Now for those of you guys that are coming from like a four stroke or maybe this is your very first two stroke bike, or you've never had to pre-mix your gas for, I'm just gonna go over and I'll show you guys quickly what I'm doing and how I'm pre-mixing pre my gas for this bike. So I've gone and I've talked with Beta and I've talked with my local gurus on the two strokes about what I should be doing for pre-mix. And uh, it seems a pretty general consensus is that everyone uses this Amsoil Dominator stuff right here. Even Beta put this stuff in the bike straight from the dealer for me. And this is what they used as the oil injection pre-mix. And it's also what we're gonna use as pre-mix to mix with our gas. So I'm gonna show you on how we do that. So here we have our pre-mix jug. Uh, this is a really simple jug. All you're gonna do is you're just gonna figure out what percentage of uh, mixture you want. Now we always do a 50 to one blend. So it's gonna be a 2% mix. So now when I went and spoke with Beta about what I should be doing for pre-mix, they suggested a 66 to one ratio. Now that is for someone who's definitely gonna be just putting around, not a whole lot of open throttle. You know, the stock oil injection system is doing a range anywhere from like 32 to one up to, I believe if I'm correct, it was a 200 to one mixture, which is extremely low oil volume going into that mixture. But uh, nonetheless, we ended up choosing 50 to one ratio because that just seems to be the go-to for everyone around here. If you're riding harder, you're getting on the throttle a lot more, 50 to one's gonna have you covered for most of your applications where you're riding a little bit more on the aggressive side. You know, you could probably get away with the 66 to one uh, if you're just putting around and cruising, but I wanted to be on the safe side to make sure my engine was getting enough oiling. So as I was saying, we went and we decided we want to do a 50 to one ratio. So we go to the 2% column here, and then you're gonna see you have these numbers here. So that's one gallon or five liters, two gallons, 10 liters, depending on how much fuel you wanna mix into it. So say I want to make 10 liters worth of pre-mixed gas. I'm gonna fill this up to the 10 in the 2% column here because we want a 50 to one ratio. We're gonna fill it up to 10 liters full of oil. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna pour that into our gas container and then we're gonna go fill it up with 10 liters worth of fuel in there and you'll have 10 liters worth of premix. Then you can take that premix fuel and put that straight into the tank and be good to go and have no worry about dealing with the oil injection system on the bike. If you guys are wanting to pick up some of that stuff for your own, I'll have the AMS oil dominator as well as the mixing container link down in the description. You can pick one up down below. Now, if you guys found today's video useful, make sure you're down below, click like, click subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.